Hey there guys, gals, my name is Luke. Welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Today I am reviewing the Vanquist Ibex 35 liter pack. Let's start off with a 360 here. Okay, now you guys have seen this pack over the last couple of months on my channel, on social media, and in some day hike adventures. I've been testing the you know what out of this pack so I can give you all the most comprehensive review of this product as possible. Numerous months ago, you may have seen a number of reviews flood YouTube. Well, I don't try to go for being the first. I want to provide the best review. So with this review here, what you are going to get is a very comprehensive review of the next generation of Ibex pack. I will be talking about a number of points in regards to the pros of this pack and in regards to the cons because there are some issues that I have with this pack here. With that being said, let's get started. Let's take a look at the pack. With the next generation of Ibex, what you have here are some very profound changes which have been made to this pack compared to the previous iteration. This pack has been improved virtually in every single way. That doesn't mean that there's not room for improvement because there definitely is. Now folks, let's go over some stats real quick. When it comes to cost, you are looking at $220 retail. This is available in numerous colors, including black, gray, coyote brown, and there's also a multi-cam version, which is slightly more expensive. When it comes to the weight, you are looking at virtually five pounds for this backpack. This thing is incredibly heavy, especially for its size. You are looking at 35 liters with this pack. When it comes to the dimensions, you are looking at 24 and a half inches tall, roughly 14 inches wide, and it has a depth of around eight inches. Now, before we go any further and really take a look at all the functions and features of this pack, let's talk about how I have been running it recently. So as you can see here, I have two waist belt pockets attached. These are from Savada. I really like the size of these. These are awesome. I have a review on these coming up soon. As you all can see here in the middle, I have a hydration bag attached to this loop. On the other side, this is my IFAC bag. I have a review on this as well if you're interested. And I have been carrying this attached to the outside, namely to see how well attachments work with this pack. I will come back to that because that's very important. Now that you guys have seen these attachments, I will go ahead and take them off so you can see this pack in its naked state. Now folks, let's talk about attaching additional pouches and so on to this pack. As you can see here, you do have some webbing, which is compatible with Pals and Molly pouches. Now, I have to admit, this works. But in my opinion, it could be a whole lot better. The sizing here is not up to the Pals and Molly standard, so you may have some issues when it comes to attaching pouches and so on. That doesn't mean that you can't attach those pouches, but they may not attach 100% correctly. For an example, I have the IFAC military pouch attached here. And as you can see, there's an odd cut to it. And that does mean that certain things will not fit 100% correctly, certain pouches and so on, just like with the IFAC pouch. Now, before going any further with this pack, let's talk about materials because this backpack features some of the best materials out on the market. Without a doubt, this pack is very strong. The bottom is 1,000 denier Kodora. The body is 500 Kodora. And the inside is a 210 denier ripstop. You have ITW and Duraflex buckles. In addition, it has YKK zippers. And of course, when you have the best of the best, you have a lot of weight. And that is certainly true for this pack. This thing is not all that big, but it is incredibly heavy, and we will be talking more about this in just a moment. Now let's focus on the features and functions of this pack, all the pockets, and so on. Starting on the back here, you have a grab handle. This pack actually features three of them. One, two, and three. Above that, on the lid, you have two pockets. Both of these are very, very good sized. Now, as I go through this video, I will be putting everything that I'm carrying or I have been carrying on the table so you guys can see how much could fit inside of this pack. So with that top pocket, there's a ton of space here. On top of that, an additional pocket. It is in this pocket that I carry my wallet, my keys, my phone when I'm hiking and so on. Going down from those pockets on the front, you have a large section of hook and loop Velcro so you can attach pouches and so on. You have a loop right here so you can attach additional gear going down. You have elastic cord, so you can stuff things in here if you want to. On the sides, you have additional loops, so you can attach whatever you want. Connected to the stretchy cord, you have this lip. So if you stuff something down here, you actually have a lip to hold it. 
that works well. Going down even further, you have gear loops, so you can attach trekking poles, whatever it is that you want to. On the bottom, you have two lines of straps. These are very, very thin. They are usable. I wish that it was standard size Molly, though. Flipping the pack over to its side, you have two compression straps. You have that webbing that we talked about earlier. You have a zippered pocket on this side. High visibility orange fabric, which gives you the ability to see what's inside of your pack easier. As you can see, you have some hook and loop right there. And then down to the bottom, you have two pockets. The other side of the pack features the exact same functions and so on. You have that zippered pocket, you have the molly, same high visibility fabric, hook and loop, and the two pockets down at the bottom. Now one cool feature when it comes to the compression straps is that they can be tucked away. As you can see here, you have a little area where you can shove the buckle if you do not wish to use them. With the front strap, it can be tucked in as well. Just like so. With the design of this pack, this is essentially a U-shape or N-shape, depending on how you want to look at it. You have two-way YKK zippers, very good pulls. I believe these are called Spartan pulls. The pack opens up just like so. So taking a look here at the back of the lid, you can see that you have numerous pockets. You have a large section of hook and loop for pouches and so on. With this pocket here, as you can see, you have a YKK zipper. You can also access this pocket from the outside with the pocket down here. Somewhat see-through material. Coffee, everybody needs that. I have a stove as well. Now when it comes to the main body of the pack, as you can see here, I have it loaded up with my jacket. I have a fire kit, stove kit, fleece blanket, some dry bags. I have a full size United States Marine Corps tarp. Then I have two carabiners with me that I always carry just in case. Now on the inside of this, you have webbing here so you can attach pouches and so on. It is also hook and loop so you can attach Velcro pouches and so on. You have hook and loop on the sides. You have a hydration sleeve pouch. I believe a laptop can fit inside this as well. I'm not the type of guy who runs around with a tactical backpack and a laptop, so I can't tell you what size laptops fit in there. You have a strap here to support hydration bladders and so on. You have a port up here at the top for the hoses to run. And folks, that is pretty much it when it comes to the inside of the pack. Let's talk about the suspension system and harness. Now looking at the back of the pack, this has just about every feature that you would imagine. You have load lifters, of course you have the drag handle which we talked about before. You have Velcro straps here for attaching gear. You have loops and so on. Fully adjustable sternum strap, includes an emergency whistle. This does not feature quick release buckles. Now when it comes to this harness system, as you can see this is fully adjustable. So you can get this to fit for you, for your son and so on. When it comes to the adjustability of this pack, that really is a rarity when it comes to tactical and military grade packs. So considering the fact that you are able to tailor the fit for yourself or for someone else, that's very impressive. Now when it comes to the padding and the support, it is excellent. You have two large sections which are raised here to promote ventilation and so on. For the shoulders, you have large sections of padding that's also raised. For the lumbar support, very large section here, very comfortable. The waist belt, it's padded. Gone is that terrible three-point buckle that Vanquist used before. Nice and simple, very, very easy, just like it should be with this one here. Excellent. Fully adjustable as you would expect. Now, with the waist belt, you can remove this if you want to. Honestly, I don't know why you would want to. This pack is heavy. You add gear to it, this pack becomes very heavy. You will want this waist belt. I have taken the waist belt out one time, ran it without it, and honestly, it's a pain in the butt to take out. It's a pain in the butt to put in. I would suggest just leaving it. If you do not want to use it, just roll it around backwards, use the buckle, attach in the front, and get it out of the way. That's much easier than taking this thing off. Now, when it comes to the waist belt, as you can see here, you do have some straps so you can attach pouches and so on. It does work well. I do wish that this was standard size Molly and Pals webbing though. But with that being said, it is very, very strong and it does a good job of holding in your pouches. With all of the gear that you see on this table, that is what was inside of my pack. And this is the gear that I carried with me on my most recent overnight adventure. Unfortunately, that is not a trip that I filmed because I was with my buddy Chris 
and he does not like being on camera, which is understandable. Some people do not like being filmed. <laughs> I get it, I get it. But as you can see here, this pack will hold a lot. And with this pack and all of this gear, it was not 100% full. There was plenty of room left. Let's see, my bivy is not included because it's still soaking wet because it rained that night. So it's at home drying out. Also not included is my food bag because I ate the food and so on. So with that being said, let's talk about the purpose of this pack. Being that it is 35 liters means that for most people, it will be a day pack, not an overnight pack. If you can go very minimalistic, you can use this for an overnight trip like I do. Now talking about my adventures, this pack has been all around the country with me. I hiked with this at Glacier National Park as part of my cross country adventure. I have taken this to Maine as well. I have flown with this pack. And speaking of which, this makes a very good carry on. There's no issues when it comes to sizing. You could fit this under the seat in front of you. You could shove this in the overhead compartments as well. Again, no issues. I've carried this pack in the blazing sun with temperatures around 100 degrees, and I've carried this pack in the rain. So let's talk about both of those aspects there. This pack is surprisingly water resistant. Yes, eventually it will soak through. If you're planning on a wet hike, definitely carry some sort of pack liner with you. That'd be the smart thing to do. When it comes to hot days, you're pushing yourself hard, you're sweating. What about ventilation? So-so, it does okay. No matter what, you will get wet with sweat. If you are pushing yourself, you're going hard and fast. There's no way around this. This is true with just about any military grade tactical pack. There are of course packs which are 10 times worse when it comes to ventilation, but again, at the same time, there are packs which are better. This one falls right in the middle, in my opinion. Of course, all of the functions, features, and so on would mean absolutely nothing if the pack wasn't comfortable. And I can tell you guys that this thing will surprise you at how comfortable it is. On the inside of this pack, you do have a hard frame sheet, which is new for this generation and it is a very welcomed addition because it makes this pack very rigid. This pack, when you put it on, becomes a part of you, just like a turtle shell. I mean, look at that. There's no sway, there's no wobble. It is amazing, it really is. Now, when you talk about comfort, you have to talk about weight. Five pounds empty, this thing is a monster, and it will surprise people at just how much this thing weighs. You can add a handful of items for your day hike and so on, and it will be incredibly heavy. That is something that you really need to consider with this pack. This is not ultra light. You start adding things to it. I mean, five pounds by itself is very, very noticeable. Luckily, when you put this on, the weight just disappears. It fits that well. It fits so well, it really does become a part of your body. And that really is this pack's most impressive feature, in my opinion. It really is amazing how comfortable it is. And as you can see in this footage, I'm going up a very, very, very steep mountain with ease, with ease. The zippers are excellent. Plenty of pockets, organization options. Again, all excellent. Since I've been talking about the positive aspects for this pack, let's talk about the negative. Because there are a few things that I would like to see changed for the future. And there are a few things that you need to be aware of before you make your decision with this pack. Because this pack will not be for everyone, and it's not just because it's super heavy. We've already talked about the Molly here. This is not a deal breaker by any means, but some pouches will not fit correctly because of it. I would personally like to see this panel being replaced with standard Molly and Pals webbing. And also, I would like to see more webbing on this pack. You can have a couple of lines here on the top. You can have some more webbing right here on the front. That would add a ton of expandability for this pack. And it's something that you need with a 35 liter pack. The more attachment options that you have, the more gear that you can carry with this system. And it really is a shame that this pack is missing that sort of expandability, considering how well it carries weight because it really does do an amazing job. I do like the elastic here on the front, but I wish that this was easily removable and you had the webbing behind it. That way you could decide how you want to utilize this pack. Think of it as giving you more capability and more organization and customization options. Now there's one more issue with this pack that I will touch upon before wrapping up this review, and that is this. Many people ask me if a pack will stand up or easily stand up on its own. This one will not stand up, in fact, it is very, very top heavy. You really have to have this thing leaning back at a very sharp angle for it not to 
tip over when it's loaded up. You have these two pockets here in the lid. You load those up, the balance of this pack is just way off. It doesn't matter how much weight you have in the bottom. Because it's so top heavy, this thing will fall over. It can be extremely annoying. Extremely annoying. As you can see here with the bottom of the pack, it slopes around. So right here is the pivot point. So as mentioned before, I mean, even at this angle when it's loaded, this thing will still fall over. It's amazing. Now that can be a very bad thing depending on the adventure of the trip that you're on and what you have attached to the outside. Now recently I did a day hike with this pack here and unfortunately I didn't have the camera running at the time. Susan and I were taking a break, that's my wife. I took the pack off, I set it down at what I was hoping was a good angle, it was not. It flipped over and just took off rolling down this mountain. If I had my GPS unit attached to the outside, it could have gotten destroyed. Luckily, everything was fine, but it is something that you need to be aware of. You could be filling this thing full of gear at your house and have it on the floor, it'll fall over, gear will spill out. This thing is extremely tipsy-turvy, so you better be prepared for that. Some people will not like that aspect to this pack, and I have to admit, it does drive me a little bit nuts as well. So with all of that being said, what do I think about the Ibex pack? I really, really do like this. This really is a great pack. 35 liters, plenty of room for most people for their day hikes. When it comes to an overnight trip, your gear loadout really does have to be more minimalistic, but it can be done. Yes, there are changes that I would personally like to see, but with this generation, there has never been a more comfortable Ibex pack. There's no doubt about this. When it comes to being comfortable, this pack is amazing. It really is. I would say that this is right at the top when it comes to tactical and military grade packs when it comes to comfort. I do want to throw out this one caution for you all to consider before you go out and buy this pack. It is incredibly heavy. I know I've talked about that before, but it really does need to be mentioned again. It is very, very heavy. When it comes to the average Joe who is doing nothing more than like afternoon day hikes, this thing weighs a ton. It is overly built. If you like the style, that's great, but you do need to keep that in mind. There are packs out there that will be lighter, more breathable, and will be a whole lot cheaper than this one here. Of course, if you love that tactical feel like I do, this thing is worth your money in my opinion. Guys, that is my review after months and months and months and months of hiking and testing and so on. It definitely gets my approval. I like this pack, and I cannot wait to see future versions of this pack. If you have any questions for me, please email me. Until next time, everyone, strength and honor. See you guys around.